Why not try it. Why is a couple more questions. This is a, clearly a big problem or issue right now. Do you think it's the most effective No, no, no the mayor's right. No, nobody's arguing it is the most effective thing. But what you do hear me saying today, and I said all I said earlier in the week was that I was lukewarm on it because I don't want people to think out there that that or anything else that we've mentioned today represents a magic wand. There is no magic wand on this. You know, public cooperation and public assistance, uh, police uh, continuing with their excellent efforts on this, their hard work, uh, having the federal government help us with the border and illegal guns coming in, having more resources put into programs to help make sure kids don't get onto the wrong track, uh, and, and so on. These are all things taken together which will uh, represent a best effort. But and I'm all ears for other ideas that people have, and I guess all I'm saying, and I think the councillor's saying the same thing, is why not try it? Why not try to do it better? Um, why not try to do it perhaps a slightly different way and and see if we can have uh, an effect on the number of guns because any gun taken off the street uh, from anywhere or taken out of somebody's house is uh, a positive step forward. Mayor Tory, yes? would you be in favor of the gun registry? Well, I'm, I mean, look, the bottom line is our laws at present, even absent the gun registry, basically prohibit people from having handguns and that's as it should be. The people who are allowed to have handguns under the present law are police officers and limited groups of other people in the sort of security business and some people who are involved in, in sport involving guns under very, very restrictive conditions. And so the challenge is, that the, the, the fact is that these kinds of gangsters, they don't pay attention. We could have gun registries, we could have more laws, all kinds of more laws. These are crooks and thugs and they have no regard for any law, including the law that says you can't kill people or shoot people, regardless, even if you were allowed to have a gun. And so I think, uh, you know, that, that uh, the law is there today and it's a strong law much stronger than in other places but I think what we now have to do is to sort of make sure we root these people out root out their guns um, help to make sure the kids don't take the wrong fork in the road and all kinds of things like that uh, and, and 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 help police to enforce those laws I will only say that we've been in touch with his office and Mr. Goodale's office, Mr. Nackby's office as recently as today. Uh, we have been in touch with them over the course of the last number of weeks and they've been extremely receptive to working together uh, to, uh, you know, to try and address this problem more effectively. Uh, and I will just say that uh, sometimes schedules make it difficult for prime ministers and mayors and others uh, to get together, but certainly I will tell you there's been a lot of communication back and forth uh, on this and that uh, they have been extremely positive in their, um, their willingness to help. Before we try to get back to council. Yeah, okay, go, take, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, gun crime has been at night, or it's gang violence, gang violence, gang violence, gang violence, gang violence, gang violence, gang I think that the sort of brazen acts, uh, a number of them, I mean, am I, should I be any less or more concerned about whatever time of day it was, somebody shooting holes in, in a house, uh, uh, the door of a house while a boy slept behind, behind that door or window? Or should I be uh, any more or less concerned about somebody being shot, a woman being shot, a pregnant woman being shot in a car? Um, you know, I think that happened at night. I'm concerned about all of this. This is absolutely, totally unacceptable. This is not the way we live in the city. This is a tiny minority of people who are engaged in largely retaliatory activity. I, from everything I know, including the one that happened in broad daylight yesterday, retaliatory activity. And we've got to get at the, at the roots of this gang activity. We've got to get the guns off the street. And we've got to help make sure we address some of these uh, things in the community. But um, I, I'm not going to say I'm any more or less concerned about any one of these. They're all serious. They're all tragic. They're all unacceptable and they're all inconsistent with the safe city we still have. And I just don't want this to become a, a city where I have to stand here any day and say it's not a safe city overall anymore. The vast majority of these people in this city, the vast majority of neighborhoods are still safe. And I don't want that put in jeopardy, but that's why we have to come to grips with this kind of stuff and, 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 and work with the police to eradicate it, uh, as opposed to having to stand here some other day and say it's not a safe city in overall terms anymore. Mr. Last Anderson, question. The, 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 the city has changed so much. You know, the real estate boom is bringing all this wealth and people. Culturally, you know, we have people like Drake sort of increasing our global reputation. Can you be a big time North American city, as it seems we're aspiring to be, and not have these problems? Because so many other than other cities do. 
I will not stand here as the mayor. I know my colleagues won't stand here as members of city council and accept the fact that to be a great, uh, you know, great city and to be a, a big city in 2016 requires you to accept an increased level of violence. What distinguishes this city from other big cities in North America and elsewhere in the world is the fact that we have found a way, not perfectly, but we found a way to live together. We found a way to make sure that whatever our differences are don't erupt into violence. And these gangsters, and that's who they are, they threaten that because they've decided that they are going to live in a world unto themselves where they just tear, carry a gun in their pocket and pull it out when they want to uh, and, and use it uh, to settle a dispute or even just to sort of carry on with, a, with, a, with, a, with a, what otherwise would be an inconsequential argument. And so that's why we've got to stop that. We've got to stop it starting with the youngest people uh, to make sure that we address, his, address causes of some of the alienation and marginalization they have and going right up to dealing with these, these gangsters themselves and through effective police work and through uh, stuff we can do with the governments. But I do not and I will not accept the fact ever, as long as I hold this job and just as a citizen here, that we have to somehow accept that with maturing as a city and growing as a city and becoming an even bigger and greater city that somehow violence goes with that. It doesn't. That's why Toronto's different and what we've got to do now is keep it that way. Thank you very much. You mentioned um, the root cause. Are you going to ask the city to look into their reserve funds and ask the province and feds for emergency funding to address this issue? The purpose of the letter and the uh, reference in the letter to the programs uh, to try and help uh, kids in particular that are in uh, marginalized circumstances and some of the areas where this violence has been more prevalent is uh, to try to obtain additional resources from all available places uh, to apply to these programs in the very short term. I mean, we have the summer coming up when the schools are closed. I went to Jamestown last summer after one of these incidents then, and we looked down the street and there was the school 200 yards away closed and during the school year the kids go to a program after school at that school and it was closed and so we have to make sure as best we can uh, in the time available that we try to do more this summer to make sure that especially the younger kids are uh, productively occupied in positive activities and I think we can make a difference on that and again uh, my early uh, inquiries of the other governments have been uh, encouraging in terms of their willingness to step up and that's what we'll have more news I hope on in the very uh, few days uh, coming up. Thanks.